So good morning, everybody. Uh, on behalf of FRB, on behalf of the co-chairman of this session, I would like to welcome you for this session on innovation in materials and structures. Uh, my name is Frank Dehn. I'm professor for building materials at KIT, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Germany. And it is my pleasure to welcome you this morning for this session. Uh, in total, we have uh, three presentations. And of course, all of you are already familiar with the procedure. So we have about 15 minutes of presentation. This is, of course, we're linked to the presenters. We have 15 minutes presentation, about 10 minutes of questions, and more or less five minutes still left time for preparing the next presentations. So uh, therefore, I would like to ask the presenters to keep in time. And of course, I would like to ask all participants and the whole audience to ask questions after the presentation, because it is a real pleasure that we have uh, uh, that engage people, they, that engage PhD students here in the sessions, and we are looking forward to hear their presentations. Um, I would like also ask my co-chairman, uh, who is Ahmed uh, Lukili and uh, Nikola Tosic, uh, maybe to introduce the next, that means the second and a, a, a third speaker, and to, to ask also for questions from the audience for these presentations. Uh, however, I would like to start, uh, and I would like to ask the first presenter, and uh, that's uh, Mohamed I mean, Ben Mebarek, and he is coming from Hungary, from Dieu, uh, and uh, for, he is talking about the numerical study on the micromechanical behavior of artificial granular materials. Uh, of course, this is a presentation which reflects, of course, his PhD thesis he's uh, working on, and he will give us new insights in his research. So the floor is yours, Teshek. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Before we begin, let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Ben Mubarak Mohamed Amin. I'm, I'm a first year PhD student in Sicini, Ispan, in Hungary. And today I'm going to give you a short presentation about the micromechanical, uh, the numerical study on the micromechanical behavior of art artificial granular material. My presentation is divided in five sections. I'll begin with introduction, where I will go through a general overview about the topic and set the main objective. Then I will talk about experimental work, which contains the preparation of the sample and test procedure. After that, we will take a look at DM modeling of crushable material, where we'll use DM to calibrate the experimental result. Finally, I will focus on results of modeling contact effect. And that leads me to conclusions. I would like you to know about the strength and breakage mechanism of grain, which nowadays has a huge importance, especially in civil engineering and mineral industry. It is well known that mechanical behavior of granular material in high pressures are hugely affected by grain crushing. The phenomenon of grain crushing results in change in grain size distribution, shape of the grains, ratio of the critical strengths, and the, void limit, the limit void ratio. The strength and crushability of granular assembly depends on the coordination number and location of contact node. A high coordination number is known by its effects of increasing particle strength and of preventing crushing. Such factors of impact in the laboratory experiment are difficult, expensive, and time-consuming. That's why numerical simulations are carried out using DM. So what is DM and how does it work? The discrete element method is a particle scale numerical method for modeling the bulk behavior of granular materials and many geomaterials such as coil or soil rocks aggregates, pellets, tablets, and powder. This method has been applied to simulate and analyze flow behavior in wide range of disciplines, including process engineering, mechanical engineering, material science, agriculture engineering, and more. The work concentrates in studying the behavior of 
the single crushable grain and the fragmentation pattern under different contact configuration and load position. In this examination, experimental tests and numerical computation are needed. For this purpose, artificial material are taken into consideration for experimental Brazilian tests in order to obtain similar testing results. The discrete element model using the Itasca particle flow PFC 3D was calibrated according to the experimental result. Numerical simulation were carried out for the modeling of, of the contact effect. I would like to point that in order to have a homogeneous artificial crushable material, so cement and silt were mixed according to their mass ratio, where cement is the bounding and the silt is the main filling material. The Brazilian test was performed to study the strength behavior of pre our prepared samples, which is six cylindrical samples of a height and diameter of 60 millimeter. As you can see in the picture below, a sketch of the initial geometry of the sample in the splitting tensile. The samples were loaded through plywood strips with a width of one over six of the sample diameter. The samples were compressed two diametrically opposite loading strips with a constant loading velocity. The reaction force was recorded as a function of displacement into the breakers of the sample. Then the load displacement data has been plotted for all, our, all the samples. Here is an interesting picture showing the typical failure observed in one of the samples. As you can see, uh, when the compressive force increase, the tensile crack propagates toward the loading points and the sample breaks in two main parts. If you take a look at the diagram of load displacement test, it's clearly shown that the applied force, in the applied force increase with the increase of displacement and suddenly it drops at the peak when it reaches the peak point. The average peak contact load 8.4 kN was reached at the vertical displacement or approachment of 2.2 mm. Similar load displacement results were measured for all Brazilian laboratory tests. All numerical simulations were carried out using PFC 3D. Our micrograin was built from a large number of micrograins were associated according to crushable bound, parallel bound properties. The load platen were modeled by plate rigid wall, the bottom, where the bottom wall was fixed while uh, the top wall was under a constant velocity. The fourth displacement contact was monitored as well as the number of broken bounds. Uh, you should know that once the tensile strength or shear strength of a bound is achieved during loading, Bounds breaks and neighboring pieces are free to behave as if they are in unbounded state. Here is a short video about our micrograin in the simulation we use to calibrate. Here is the micrograin. It's made of a large number of micrograins. As you can see in the video, we will have a diametrical crack and the grain will break in two similar parts. The load displacement diagram will be recorded at the center of the top platen. I would like you to see the table. These are the calibrated parameter using parallel bound uh, properties, which is already implemented in the PFC 3D software. The parameter that we need to put in the software is diameter of the balls, Installation gap, density, young modulus of the particle, ratio of normal to shear stiffness of the particle, particle friction coefficient, young modulus of the parallel bound, ratio of normal to shear stiffness of the parallel bound, tensile and cohesion bound strength. Now let's compare this result with experimental result. Typical simulation result of calibrated model are shown in diagram where numerical curve is in orange color and experimental curve is in blue. As you can see, we calibrated the bound parameter of the DM micrograin model to better match in the force displacement curve. We can see that when the peak force is reached, the micrograin breaks in two main parts. From all of this, we can 
get that the calibration is in accordance with the experimental result. The behavior of single crushable grain and the fragmentation pattern and the different contact configuration and loading position are studied to investigate the bond breakers in uh, the crushable micrograin for various coordination number and location of contact points, two models were considered. First, grain platin contact model. Second, we use a uh, grain cylinder wall contact model. Now let's move to the second case. As you can see, the four platin were moving to, uh, together toward the center of the micrograin with the same constant velocity. If you take a look at the micrograin after breakers, you can see that the, micro, the micrograin breaks into one major piece and the number of smaller fragments. Here is an interesting for displacement diagram, show which, uh, which shows more complex post-peak behavior. And that is explained due to several major failure in the micrograin. The highest load measured was 10.5 two kilonewton, which, can, which we can consider the main peak failure point with a displacement of 1.45 millimeter on top of the OR. You should note that the displacement, this displacement is half of total displacement of the top and the bottom. Let's take a look at the third case. The top horizontal platen with two inclined platen were all moving together toward the center. As you can see in this part, the fracture pattern showed that the micrograin breaks into three main parts. Now I would like you to take a look at the recording of load displacement, where it indicates that the vertical contact load increases linearly and reach a pre-peak value of 9.5 kN at a display a vertical displacement of one millimeter, then continues to increase into the peak value of 11.4 with a loading displacement of 1.27 millimeter. Note that the displacement is smaller than the calibrated case because all the platen are moving while the first in the first case it was only the top one. Now let us consider another model. In order to examine the contact properties on grain assembly near to reality, as you can see, cylindrical rigid wall set around the crushable micrograin where the load was set from the rigid wall to the micrograin. It's, uh, it's clearly showed that different boundary condition were studied and investigated like the previous model. The plot of the fracture pattern at the peak load of the grain cylinder contact model is similar to the cases of great platin contact model, where both shows cracks in the micrograin and the breakers mechanism is nearly a sudden drop. If we take a look at the next slide, you can see that I summarized the essential results of all cases in this table, where I mentioned peak load displacement at peak point and number of fragments. If you take a look at the peak load row, it's clearly shown that there is a change in the load depending on each case. As a general conclusion from the previous table results, we can say that the boundary condition can have a huge effect on the, load, on the peak loading and the fracture pattern. For the cases of grain platin contact model, we can conclude that the peak loading of the crushable micrograin in the, three, uh, in the third case is greater than the four and two platin loading cases. This greater load can be explained because the, of the micrograin, which breaks to three major fragments and implies more breakers inside the micrograin in comparison to other cases, and thus leads to a greater loading breakage. While from the cases of grain cylinder wall contact model, the peak loading is lower than the cases of grains platen walls. 
which means that smaller surface contact leads to a decrease in the loading capacity. So we can say from this that the peak load increases with the increase of the contact point number. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. I would be glad to answer any question you may have. Okay, thank you very much for this very nice presentation and for keeping perfectly the time. And uh, of course, the floor is open for any questions. I actually do not know how the procedure is, but uh, if there are any questions, please indicate that there is a question or that you have a question. And of course, I mean, he is happy to answer you. I, I don't know if perhaps I could ask some questions. Okay, it's, it's up to you, of course. Uh, so thank you for the presentation. Uh, for me, it was very interesting and honestly something new to, to see and, and learn. So uh, one or two questions in the table showing the parameters used in the DEM simulation, uh, because I'm not so familiar. Could you just slightly more explain what is the installation gap and its importance? It's, and, uh, the installation choice? gap is uh, when we can make a bond in between one particle and another. Imagine two balls. We can say that if they are already close to 0 0.002 millimeter, the bond is created. We can set it whether to zero. It means when the, already the balls are touching either, each other. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. No um, Okay. And uh, now, later with the models with the platens or, or uh, smaller load applications, uh, is it interesting or in your future work to make models which contain uh, several of these granular material models? Yes. yes, yes, that's an interesting question. At the beginning, I just tried to make one microgram just to see like uh, the contact, uh, the coordination number contact and the load in position, as you can see here. But for more next uh, future work, I will try to make the grain assembly. I will also maybe like I will go to like geotechnical uh, phenomena. Like you can apply like many uh, grain assembly like in audiometer tests, or like uh, you can make penetration to, like pile penetration on the soil. Also, you can simulate it. So this is the idea of like my future work. Okay, okay. Thank, okay. You. Thank you. We have another question uh, about the management of the rigid body movement. Do you see the uh, question in, in, in the chat? Otherwise, I ask Nicholas to ask the question live. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Uh, for example, at the, this slide, you have um, at the GCCM2. Some particle around the ah, yes. This. yes, for instance, you have uh, some particle around the, um, the the specimen which represent the beam. Uh, yes, or... yes, yes. Because here we like make perpendicular uh, loading on all the sides, so the sample couldn't like break directly in one crack. That's why only smaller fragments are showing. Okay. But how, how do you consider the, the particle uh, which are not in contact with the uh, boundary condition? Here we didn't like consider this particle. Firstly, it was all, as you can see at the first stage, it was all bounded by using parallel bound. When the load from the platen is going through, uh, it's lo the, the loading velocity is constant. When it's the bond is break, as I mentioned before, uh, when the bond is break, like the ball is free to uh, to move as if it's unbounded. So here, after breaking this ball, are breaking. They are just unbounded, and so they are free. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. No problem. Okay. Any other questions from the people attending this session? Maybe, maybe I have a question. Uh, it's also related uh, in a little bit to the uh, question asked by Dr. Tosic. Uh, it's on uh, slide number nine. Uh, maybe you can uh, go back yes, 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 to, yes, to yes. this table here. Uh, you, you're showing here uh, the input parameter for your study, for your numerical study. Yes, this is the, uh, the calibrated parameter. Yes. and. Uh, 
you also in uh, this table you indicating the the modulus of elasticity young's mm -hmm. modulus of the particle but yeah. i can't see any value for it which which value have you preset for your for your study was there a variation or have you selected one specific value for the modulus of elasticity because yeah, I can for I the can modulus yeah here i got uh, the question thank you here yeah, for the modulus of elasticity is directly calculating the stiffness uh, of okay. our particle so here since we have the same diameter of all the particles uh, it's not changing why if we use different uh, uh, different sizes of uh, balls it can be changed Oh, okay. But when we use the, if we use the stiffness, we need to change depending on each uh, ball's uh, diameter. But since you are using here Young modulus, is directly calculated by depending on the diameter. So even here, when we use the Young modulus, if we change, if we make like different variation of uh, diameter, it will calculate for each ball. Okay. Okay. But but. but as you as you indicated in your introduction of your presentation you mentioned that you have this artificial granular material yeah uh, so that means the properties of the granular material of of the balls as you said uh, has always the same property from yeah. an elastic point of view and 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 that's from from a deformation point of view so no, my question is yeah, no, yeah. yeah Normally in like simulation, it's not always exactly the, the value of the reality. That's why we use like graphic calibration uh, in the end, just to have the same uh, loading bar, the loading curve. So from the loading curve, we can like simulate the, uh, the same, but in uh, the software, I don't think it will be almost the same. It's just a calibration. That's why it's just a calibration. Okay, but how about the transferability to uh, natural material with heterogeneous properties? For the natural material, uh, I think it's sometimes harder because we you don't know like the diameter of all pa parameter. For as I mentioned before, you don't know the all diameter of all the balls, so you can have like a void inside and a lot of whether big particle or small. And also you can simulate it, but also it's hard to calibrate. Because as you can see, if we make like a crashing for a sand or a rock, each time it's not given like the same loading, uh, the same loading displacement curve. That's why here we use the homogeneous, uh, homogeneous artificial material to have similar result. Because here when we make like uh, six samples, all the six samples in the Brazilian test gave almost the same curve. But if we use a uh, non-homogeneous uh, material like rock, uh, we cannot uh, simulate it exactly because it's, uh, it will be, it's, its result will be different. It can be higher in one smaller load, can go so high and uh, lower in other uh, different samples. Okay, thank you. Any, any, any further questions? Uh, if I can, sorry, just one another brief question uh, to yes. ask. Uh, so if I understood this properly, this is a 2D model that is represented? No, no, it's a no? 3D model. So it's a sphere, right? Or No, it's cylinder. Ah, it's a cylinder. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. cylinder, yeah. But it's just this here where you can see just like there to see, to better see the crack. Okay, and in the future work of uh, like several of these granular materials, is it the idea to make with like uh, spherical particles? Yes, yes. We can... whether we can make by spherical or also uh, there is option to make almost the same of uh, same design of of uh, same shape of reality. Okay. And you can make all this, um, I mean the micrograin, you can make many micrograins and uh, apply on them forces. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Maybe the last one from my side. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a provocative question. Uh, what What is the benefit of your study uh, for the concrete community for or for FIB? Yes, as I mentioned before, when I said like experimental tests sometimes can be hard, expensive, and uh, time consuming. 
Here we can like make simulation before we apply any test. As you can see here, I just made like a simple one, like the diameter of uh, compression. And I could know after to make simulation, I could know that if I make other tests like uh, the four platen or the three platen wall, if I make compression, I can uh, like expect the cracking. So here we, we win time and also less uh, sample we made. I mean, we could make all the uh, Brazilian test uh, condition of a contact point and the uh, loading condition on the experiment. So uh, DM simulation can, can prevent us like from losing time or expense, more expense. Okay, thank you. So it's in terms of time saving and cost efficiency, uh, yeah that, that would be the benefit of your, your your study okay yeah and also if there is an idea you can first try it here if you get a good result you can apply it on like experimental okay good so uh we're a little bit ahead of the schedule uh, about two minutes nevertheless uh, if there's no further question i would like to thank again you i mean for your presentation it was very nice